On one hand, I think, um, how can you all not be tired of hearing me <laughs> talk all the time? But on the other hand, this is Wednesday night. And for two reasons, it's an exciting time. One is we're in First Peter, and we are, we are literally discovering this together. Um, and uh, the other reason is, some of you may have forgotten, is No Condemnation Wednesday. Yeah, you forgot that. No condemnation. You can't be walking around in condemnation on the Wednesdays. We said this a long time ago, so you're supposed to be free and happy on Wednesdays, and with the Lord, of course. Alana Our, says, yay. Alana remembers. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> okay. Uh, today, we have a, an exciting subject uh, in First Peter, and that's what we're doing. So just a reminder, what we're doing is that... Um, now I'm going through pieces of the book of Hebrews, and I'm trying to just get you set up to really realize that this book is just about one thing, and it's, it is the sufferings of Christ and His desire that we be with Him in those sufferings. And so we go through things that are actually His sufferings so that we could be with Him, but we usually don't know it, and this is, this is kind of what we want to talk about right now. So I want to talk about the, the stone that was disallowed. <clears throat> and I want to add to that the reason why it was disallowed is because they were confounded. They were confounded. Um, and I put, uh, they disallowed Christ, his sufferings, and his way of lowliness. Um, and they were confounded over that. So we want to just look at in First Peter chapter two and verse four. Okay. First Peter two four. To whom coming oh, before I read this, let me say also, once we've gone through a certain amount of things like we're doing right now, I'm literally going to just go through the book and it's five chapters and it's pretty quick and we will have really sort of set out a lot of the major things so that it'll be a lot smoother for you. Uh, and you'll go, yeah, I remember that. And um, <clears throat> so here we go. First Peter 2, 4. To whom coming as, a, as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Okay, so the first thing to realize is that this verse is about Christ crucified, okay? It's about Him going through the sufferings. It's about Him being uh, rejected of men. It's about Him being uh, uh, evil spoken to and railed upon by evildoers. Um, he is the living stone that was disallowed. Well, that took place in His trial and in His crucifixion. And um, so it, it's giving two main things um, uh, that, well, three really if you count the living stone thing. This is not a dead stone, and, and uh, it's kind of important that we understand that, that uh, 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 it's, it's a living stone that gives itself. It's a living stone that gives itself, okay? And that's what makes it alive unto God through Jesus Christ for us too. All right. So, uh, but the, the other things is, are that um, it is disallowed of men, but it is chosen of God and precious. All right. So, <clears throat> we're, we're, we know from what we've studied so far in First Peter, <clears throat> that this whole thing of the sufferings of Christ and being a partaker of them and being with Christ in them, um, uh, like Peter didn't do when, they, when Jesus did his ministry in the earth, is a precious thing to the Lord. And um, being of that spirit, not just Jesus being of it, but us being of that spirit, is precious to the Lord. And, that's, a, that's probably one of the words that we'll get to 
uh, in this little phase two is what I've been calling it. Uh, we'll get to it over in phase three, uh, which has nothing to do again with the coronavirus. <laughs> this has to do with what we're studying here. <clears throat> um, so it's talking about this living stone that is disallowed of men. It is rejected. It is Christ. It is him being um, uh, uh, railed upon. It is him being uh, having false witnesses come against him. It is it is him with in all of that that we've discussed so far. And so it is addressing that as being disallowed and of men and and if we stick with the the definitions of that then it would be disallowed indeed of evildoers some of you know that i think alana knows that and as knows it well uh, as we as we go through this but at the same time and here's the deal and that's what we want to really sort of address at the same time that he's being disallowed indeed of men because of the spirit that he is in, because of the nature he is manifesting, he is chosen of God and precious. Okay, Now, he's not chosen of God. This isn't talking about uh, post-crucifixion where he's chosen of God and is seated on the throne above all names that can be named. This is talking about he has been chosen of God to go through this, number one, to demonstrate God's nature, number two, to demonstrate that nature to us, number three, of course, the result of, of salvation and all that that entails. Um, but he's chosen of God. Okay, so where do, we, where do we get that from instead of chosen over here to sit on the throne? Well, yeah, but he's chosen to sit on the throne because of what he suffered and went through in the spirit in which he went through it. Well, where we get that chosen of God thing for the cross instead of for the for the throne is that um, the you know the Passover, everybody, every family on the Passover had to go out and they had to choose the right lamb, and it was always the Father that chose the lamb because the Father, the he our heavenly Father, chose this lamb. Okay. He's chosen of God and precious to him. All right. And I could see that Passover, especially the first one, but maybe all of them, if they really understood what was going on uh, in that first one, choosing this lamb and going, you are precious to us because, you know, we should have died and you, you have died that we might live. All right. So, um, so 1 Peter uh, 2 23, let's look at that. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. All right, so this little phrase, committing himself to him that judges righteously is if nothing else and it is many other things but if nothing else it is stating that jesus is not was not passive going through this and that we are not to be passive that that would be in a certain sense the worst thing he's not looking for passive people he's not looking for people to to just you know because i mean i'll be honest with you passivity can lead more to demon possession than really being with the lord he wants he gave you your mind your will and your emotions and he wants you to use all that but he wants you to use that in conjunction with his nature within you not just you know well because because without being born again and having his life within us mind will and emotion is perverted i mean it's not it's not i don't know i don't know the right word but it's not sanctified by the life and nature of christ that is within us or the Holy Spirit, for that matter. All right. And so our decisions, the, the, our, our will-making decisions, are made by a will that is selfish, self-centered, that, that is, thinks of itself first and maybe puts, runs, down, runs over someone else or something like that. Same thing with our thinking and all of that. All right, so... Um, 
Let me. Okay. So uh, he he was so he wasn't passive. He was in someone's hands, and it was someone's hands that he trusted. You can be in someone's hands and not know if they're gonna. You know, it's like Pontius Pilate, the Pharisees, and everybody else, the Romans, and then have you know, let's say. Pontius Pilate's wife and say, well, she, she might be able to influence this. I, there's hope. You know, maybe if I'm in her hands, there's hope. Well, this is saying that, that we're in, uh, he was in someone's hands that he trusted. He trusted them more than he trusted Pontius Pilate or more than he trusted his wife or more than anything else. And, uh, and it was a trust that brought a certain amount of peace and assurance, okay? So, um, but then you look at the situation, he was in the hands of unjust men, externally, physically, in, in the outward situation. He was in the hands of unjust men. But in truth, he was in somewhere above that. He was in the hands of the Father. And where do we get that from? Jesus on the cross says, Father. He doesn't say anymore, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? My God. He says, Father. Now he comes back to the Father and he says, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Because now he's, he's, he's going into death. He's entering into the death. And he's entering in into someone else's hands. All right. So, uh, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. So, this is hard to describe for people that don't really, mm, I don't know, especially haven't been through this enough to, to have the assurance that, you know, that you're glorifying the Father by the Son by having the right spirit. See, it's not... Um, I mean, to us, it would be all about, if we don't understand that, it's all about getting back at them or all about, you know, our less debt breath being, you know, ah, you know, railing on them or something, you know, making them feel bad or whatever, you know, something that is the exact opposite of what First Peter's all about, what's the exact opposite of what the Lamb of God is all about, Jesus is all about, and what the Father wants from us, okay? So... Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Now, just a reminder, we know that Jesus, um, in, in John 12, he said, Now is my soul troubled. But then he says, But what shall I say then? Okay, so you watch out what you're going to say. <laughs> you can have a troubled soul. See, the soul is an issue. We know that. We know it because one of the bigger subjects we dealt with early on was the salvation of the soul. And that salvation of the soul is always within these realms that he's talking about. To save our souls from striking back. To save our souls from being the Lord and the, uh, the, the, the wielder of revenge toward others or or to guide our tongue, uh, all these things. No, in, and we were not even finished with the salvation of the soul. We will come back and hit it even stronger toward the, the third phase because it's such a big deal when you're in this situation. You're, now is my soul troubled. Your soul will be troubled. But what shall I say then? Father, save me from this hour? No, save my soul from this hour. I hope you understand what I mean. Save my soul from reacting in this hour instead of save me from this circumstance. Now, that's not every, every, every situation, but it is certainly every situation that God looks at as being the sufferings of Christ and wanting you to be with him. Now, there's more uh, on that later. All right. So now let's look in 1 Peter 4, 14. 1 Peter 4, 14. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon, thee, or upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. 
So how can you be happy when you're evil spoken of? Okay, well, that's a, there you go. That's a good question. How can you be happy? Because this, that's what it says. If you be reproached, happy are you? Okay, so how, how can you do that? And who would ask that question? All of us. We would all go, um, you know, I don't get it. How could, you know, well, that's the whole point of the, of the epistle of 1 Peter. He's writing this to help us so that we don't deny the Lord when we should be with the Lord in his suffering. So, so that, we're, that we understand where he's at, not trying to get him to understand where we're at. We are discerning as um, in the situation when they went uh, to the Garden of Gethsemane. And they went there to pray, but they didn't go there to pray. Jesus went there to pray because Jesus knew that in that garden they were to come for him and that was they were going to take him away. And, you know, he wouldn't be with them in that way anymore. Um, it, well, he wouldn't be that way with them anymore. Even when he rose from the dead and came back, ultimately he was with us in another way. He was in us. But um, uh, it is, you know, how can, when we're being reproached, how can we be happy? That's the whole point of, of this epistle. And that's the whole lesson of this epistle, that there is a way. If nothing else, I mean, like tonight's class, if there's nothing else you get out of this, Peter is, the whole letter is telling you there's a way. I'm telling you a way. Jesus was with the Father. And yes, but when, you know, it's almost like he, they showed him going through, you know, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And then, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit to show, as it were, the saving of his soul, saving him from you know, just going off and, and doing, being an evildoer, if you still remember what that means. Um, so, but we want, see, it says happy are you, but we want to be happy when our enemy is dealt with. You know, I'll go through this and I'll keep my mouth shut, but I'm, I am, uh, uh, but boy, I can't wait they get what's coming to them. All right. That's not what this, this says. If you be reproached for Christ, happy are you not? If you be reproached for Christ and you go through it pretty good, happy are you because God's going to get them. Doesn't mention that. It's, it's talking about in the middle of it. It's talking about uh, certainly at the end of it. It's talking about um, a spirit of glory. Well, how do I explain that? I can't explain that. I, I, I could probably draw a chart on the board, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't explain it. That's why, we're, <laughs> that's why we're in this together. That's why we're taking this class, so that the Holy Spirit might speak to our spirit, not Randy speaking to our heads, but the Holy Spirit speak to our spirit and reveal a realm of witness with the Lord that maybe we've never really understood. All right, so um, uh, in that first verse that we read about the stone, we saw two things. There was a disallowing and there was a choosing at the same time. At the same moment that Jesus is standing there and being falsely accused and reviled or slapped or all that kind of stuff, at the same time that there was a disallowing going on, there was a choosing and there was a preciousness of that to the Father. Okay? Praise God. Praise God. Um, <clears throat> so, we be reminded of um, Philippians um, three, where Paul was talking about sufferings of Christ. And he said to know him in the fellowship of his sufferings. Well, this is that. This is that. It is, it is not to, for him to know us when we're suffering and for us to go, you know, oh, I see, I get what you mean. Yeah, this, these people are bad. You know, that's the wrong spirit, you know. 
He's trying to get us not just to be pitiful and, and all that to him, but to, to um, be with him in that, to understand. And we'll explain some more of that as we go here. But to understand what he's going through. And I was talking about in the garden. Well, in the garden, he came there to pray. They came there to sleep. Okay. They didn't know what was going on. He tried to explain it. He said, this is my body, which is given to you just before all of that. In the upper room, as they took Passover, he's the Passover lamb. He's the real one, the only real one that ever came. He's, this is it. And they're oblivious, totally oblivious to him, totally oblivious of what he's praying in the garden, you know, because uh, they're, they're tired, you know. And so, you know, they missed it. They missed it. And they missed him, his heart. They missed an opportunity that they could have said, Lord, would it be okay if I not stay over here with James and John uh, that I come over here and I get on my face beside you on your face and I weep with you and I throw my arm around you if, if so be it possible to do and to, um, to be with you in your sufferings. Well, Peter had a lot of those opportunities, and he missed them. And he missed, he missed the Lord. And, um, you know, I mean, a lot of people talk about Peter. I've, I've heard this since I was in Bible school. Um, the time that um, uh, a bunch of us were Bible school students were standing around and and they started saying, well, I want to be like Paul, and I want to be like so-and-so, David, and I want to be like this and that, you know. And uh, one of them said, well, I want to be like Peter. And, you know, the, the Paul and David people went, why would you want to do that? Well, because I identify with Peter because he messes up really bad. That's really not a good testimony, folks, that you identify with Peter. He's sitting here writing a whole book going, I missed it horribly. I really missed it, you know. Um, and the other guys weren't too smart either because they're trying to be this or that. Well, you know, I want to be identified in Christ. Not, I don't want to be him. I don't want to be like him. I want it to be the one, the very one. And if it's the very one, then when, when he, as it were, he is taken through these sufferings, though he is in me, I can be with him in that instead of freaking out. Okay, so um, uh, there is a di disallowing and there is a choosing, and you you're gonna in that scenario you're gonna go through both. Hopefully, if the Lord, you know, if if if. Your soul becomes saved, if you will. You'll be chosen because that will be his nature in you, not you. And you will have been with him. You will have been with him. So much so that you will, will let him, not your soul, guide your tongue. You'll let the lamb who opened not his mouth. You, instead of your soul guiding your thoughts during that, um, Jesus is... You know, what shall I say? This is why I came. I'm supposed to be here. They're not murdering me. I'm giving myself sacrificially. See? All right. So, um, so why would you not be with him then in this? Well, like Peter, you wouldn't be with him because you would see that circumstance as evil. That's the truth. That's why you wouldn't be with the Lord in the fellowship of his sufferings. That's why you wouldn't, uh, and that was why Peter didn't. Okay, I'll give you a few examples here. Because, you know, you, you, what you're doing is, you know, this, all this bad and all these, you know, these Romans that, that are, you know, coming and, the, and the, the chief priest and all this is gathering in a big storm. Well, it's not really a big storm. It's about to be 
the most wonderful moment on the planet when Christ is given as a sacrifice, not just for the sins of the world, but to become the life of all those who receive him. So, it's all in how you see it. God says, chosen and precious. You know, Peter says, this is horrible. This is bad news. And the rest of the disciples. So, uh, like Peter, you see it as evil. So, let me read Matthew 16 again to you. Matthew 16, 20 through 26. This is Jesus talking. Then, then charged he, Jesus, his disciples, that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go. I must go. He's saying, I must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day, which we know they never understood that. Then Peter took him. Then Peter took him. Then Peter, who sees all of that as evil, and Jesus sees it as, I'm a chosen Passover lamb to the glory of the Father and to the glory of the nations, if you will. Took him and began to rebuke him. Okay. So Peter has no clue he is in his own mind, which is the same mind that we all have. It is the same way of thinking. Well, this ain't good. This is bad. Good is if, you know, God rained down, you know, 100 pound hailstones on all of these people right here, except left maybe a few, so that when it was done, they'd go, man, you really are, you know, of God. Well, he didn't want to be known as being of God based on miracles. I know that's hard for everyone to believe. I didn't say he, he didn't like miracles or what. He doesn't want to be known as that. He, he wants to be known as the Lamb of God, even on the throne. The Lamb on the throne. The slaughtered Lamb. Specifically, the slaughtered Lamb. And so, but we're trying to make him the miracle worker. Well, he did all those miracles and not one thing ultimately changed eternally. The people who got sick, got healed, they would die again. You know, the people that, you know, all of, the, all of that was temporary until the cross. And then through death, he defeated him that had the power of death. Through through the death of the cross, he defeated the old nature. Through the death of the cross, he dealt with sins. Through the death of the cross, all of those things came through the Lamb giving himself in this way. And had he not done it, we would still be in a mess down here. Okay, so then... Uh, then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord... Be it far from thee. No, this can't be the will of God. You, you know, this is a bad thing. Don't you understand that? This is evil. He saw it as evil. And uh, this shall not be unto thee. But Jesus turned and said unto him, Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. And we've stressed that before, but need to every time probably. You are offending me with your mind and your viewpoints and your way of dealing with things and everything. You don't understand. You, you savor. You savor it. You don't just think that way. You savor the ways of man. And you, but you don't savor the things that be of God. Which, what things is, is Jesus talking about here? He's talking about going to the cross. He's talking about um, uh, the sufferings of Christ. Because he didn't just say, well, they're going to kill me. He said, they're gonna, I'm going to suffer many things. He's talking about the sufferings of Christ. <clears throat> um, thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come 
after me, let him deny himself. See, this isn't, this isn't just a discipleship uh, training course he just all of a sudden started. If you guys want to follow me, you have to deny yourself. That's the, that's the context we put it in. Okay, I'll leave school and I'll come follow you. Okay, I will do this and I'll come follow you. N no, this is a spirit and an attitude. He's not, Peter isn't saying, uh, I'm not going to follow you if it gets rough. Peter is saying, I'm looking out for you. And this should not, this evil should not be happening to you. And Jesus is going, you don't even know, much less savor the things that I'm talking about here. You're missing it. You're missing it. And uh, so let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. And whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Okay. Shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake, for my sake, for my sake, you go through the sufferings of Christ, not for your sake. You go through the sufferings of Christ for his sake and for the Father getting the Son. That's why you do it. That's why you would even risk doing it. That's why you would uh, ever come to a place where you would say, okay, I'm in a place where I would want to do that. That's the only reason why. It, that, that you would bring glory to Jesus and Jesus in you would bring glory to the Father. Now, we discussed all this early, early on and, and uh, saw it in the pattern because there's a pattern throughout First Peter that ends with this glory to Jesus and to the Father through the Son. Um, for what is, a, what is a man profited if he should gain the whole world and lose what? His soul. The salvation of the soul. His soul has never been saved. Yeah, maybe he's born again and everything, but he's going he's gonna to gain the whole world. Is that really what we want? But he's going to lose his soul. In other words, he's, his soul will not be saved from his viewpoint, from his... Uh, reactions. He'll just be like everyone else in that sense. He'll be an evildoer even though he's born again and bound for glory, bound for heaven, if you will. Um, or what shall a man give ex in exchange for his soul? All right. Okay, so um, let me give you one more scripture like that. Let me, well, let me look to see where I'm at right here. Well, of course, the other one, I'm not going to read that because we're, it, it'll take us a little longer. But you know it. It's in Matthew 26, 65 through 75. And it's basically when, when Peter denied the Lord, you know. And so Jesus is being accused. Jesus is being taken away. And they say, are you with him? And he said, no, I don't know him. Well, I'm not going to be with him in his sufferings. This is bad. This is evil. And this, I'm trying to make this point that why would someone not want to be with the Lord in his sufferings? Because try as we will try to not do this, we will conclude that it is evil unless God opens our eyes the way he did to Peter. And again, not, I wish that me just saying all this would make the difference, but trust me, it, it won't. You have to hear it and pray under your breath and say, Lord, if this is of you, try about that prayer. If this is of you, then work it in me. All right. But then later on, Peter did understand it. He did. He got it. Okay. So if you, if you are one of those who said, well, you know, I really identify with Peter. Well, good. Identify all the way with Peter, not just in what he did wrong for God's sake, but that what he did right by writing 1 Peter. Okay. 1 Peter 1, verse 6 and 7. This is, this is him when he finally gets it. <clears throat> Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, 
if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations, meaning you've entered into this, the, 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 the tunnel of the sufferings of Christ, that the trial of your faith being much more precious, there's that word precious, than gold that perisheth is, okay, that perishes, that is going to, it's going to pass away, but this won't perish in God's heart. If I can say it like this, in his book of remembrance, this will not pass away. Uh, then gold, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So here it is. You're going through the trial. Um, you are, um, it's, there's, it's being tried with fire, but that there's this hope that you might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing when Christ appears and the salvation of your soul takes place and you are one with him in mind and heart and you go through it without having to rail, revenge, or ricochet. <laughs> Any of the above and more, starting with an R. Um, so one more scripture on that. Uh, 1 Peter 4, 12 through 14. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, when, it, when he comes forth in you, when, when the saving of your soul takes place, um, uh, ye may be glad with exceeding joy, and if ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you, for the Spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Okay, so you have, um, you have disallowed and you have um, uh, glorified, as it were. You have um, God's choosing. Okay. You're disallowed of men, but chosen of God. Well, here it, you, it says a little bit different. It says, on your part, or on their part, you are evil spoken of, but on your part, you're with the Lord. He is glorified. And it doesn't say you are glorified. It says he is glorified. Praise God. All right. I'm going to try to move to the second phase and see how far we go. And this, ha this is, along with this, it is not being confounded or ashamed as to the trial. And that's where Peter missed it. And that's where we miss it. That's where we can't tell, well, is this suffering of Christ or not? We, 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 we get confounded by it and we get ashamed because we're in this trial and we look bad and people are making us look bad and we don't understand it. And our soul begins to react and, and we begin to be reproached and then we're drink, having to drink the gall, <laughs> you know, instead. And, and you know, Peter, Jesus didn't, didn't drink it. They put it up to his mouth and he, he wouldn't drink it. I'm not going to drink the gall and the bitterness and all that. <clears throat> all right. So let's talk about not being confounded or ashamed as to the trial. 1 Peter 2, 6. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone. There's that rock, that stone. Elect, meaning chosen, precious, there it is again. And he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Okay? All right, but let, me, let me just give you a clue. We haven't dealt with it yet. When we get into the believing in First Peter, you're going to find that what it is that, they, that, that he's always talking about is believing in relationship to this spirit and this situation that you can be with the Lamb, that you can be with the crucified, and you can be with Him in a right spirit. And you believe that and you enter it with faith. And therefore, it's the trial of your faith. Okay? But we'll see it later. <clears throat> uh, he that believeth shall not be confounded. Okay? This is Peter quoting this. Now, let's go to Psalm 69, verse 6. 
Because remember I said that Peter got a whole lot of his stuff from the Psalms. Psalm 69, verse 6. Let not them that, that wait on thee, O Lord God of hosts, be ashamed for my sake. Let not those that seek thee be confounded for my sake, O God of Israel. Okay? There's that shame. There's that confounding. There's that, there's that getting into it and not having a clue that this is precious to the Lord. It's like being one of the disciples that keeps sleeping, except except it's worse because it'd be like it'd be like the disciples while Jesus is over there in agony and and sweating great drops of blood it would be like them sitting over there talking about going well this is wrong this can't be right and these those people are wrong and all this that would be worse well that's that's what we tend to do we're worse than the disciples he doesn't have to wake us up we're awake and spouting all right so um uh, so let's go to the next verse. Because for thy sake, for thy sake I have, repo have borne reproach. Shame hath covered my face. But I'm doing it for your sake, that your spirit can come forth, that the Father can get the, that spirit out of me, which is you. Okay, still in uh, Psalm 69, verse 18. Draw nigh unto my soul and redeem it. There it is. See, there's this, there's this, uh, he's, he realized he's in, he's being reproached. Shame hath covered his face. Um, um, uh, but, but he's crying out not to get out of it, but draw nigh to my soul. Deliver me because of mine enemies. But he's delivering, he's not delivering me from my enemies, but because of them, my soul is reacting. Okay. Then, uh, just a few more verses here in Psalms and then one more in 1 Peter and we'll be done. Verse 19 through 22. Thou hast known my reproach and my shame and my dishonor. Well, of course he has. He went through it. And now he's going to go through it again in you. Okay. Mine adversaries are all before me. Reproach hath broken my heart and I am full of heaviness. And I look for some to take pity, but there is none. See, this is before your soul is saved. And, and that's what he said. Uh, just the verse in front of it, verse 18, said that. Redeem my soul. Here's my, what my soul thinks. Uh, repros uh, I am full of heaviness. I look for some, some to take pity. You know, and that's what we do. We get in that and we go, well, I need somebody to have pity on me. Somebody to feel sorry for me. Uh, and there was none. And for comforters, but I found none. There it is. They gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. This is the sufferings of Christ. This is the cross, as it were. This is the opportunity to be with Him. Okay? And then, let me just close with 1 Peter 2.12. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they're saying you're the evildoer, but they're speaking against you. They may, by your good works, which they behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. What is the visitation? Christ is seen in you. Christ, instead of they, they're, uh, they're speaking against you and they're saying that you're an evildoer, and they're, but they're doing it as an evildoer. And they're trying, the devil is trying to stir that up so that he can um, get you to react Remember the roaring lion we went through as one of the first ones of these we went through? Trying to, trying to get you to break with being with the Lord in this way. Um, but he says, when they see your good works, and let me tell you, we're going we're gonna to go through this, and if we hadn't already, we're going to see that the good works are being with the Lamb's Spirit through the trial uh, to, to allow Jesus to come forth. And glorify the Father. They may be whole and glorify God in the day, not of your visitation, of the day of Christ's visitation in you that he's seen by others in his true spirit. Father, 
We thank you for this time, and I thank you for hungry hearts that, Lord, that get on Skype. And Lord, I just, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my being, I pray that you'll break through for their sake, for their hunger, for their desire for you to see and to know you, O Lamb of God, to see and know you in them in these trials when they come and the, they, they are truly the sufferings of Christ. Father, that they may um, not do what Peter did before, but they may take heed to a man who deeply failed, but found the way, the life, the spirit that you wanted him to live with Christ in it and then became one of the main purveyors of that to the people of God. Father, bless our people here. Bless, blessed are the hungry. Feed them. Father, bless the, blessed are they that mourn. Bless them with this spirit. Father, minister to them. Father, I just rebuke the enemy that would try to steal the word from them. Satan, I rebuke you and command you to flee. And Father, may your spirit be able to come in like a flood and rise, rise up in them by Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, and make it, make it spirit and life within them. Father, I thank you. I thank you for them. I thank you for their hearts. I thank you that you would allow me to share such precious things from your heart to lay a table for them in the presence of their enemies. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Love you guys so much. More than I can say. I don't just study the Word for the fun of studying it. I do it for you and that He might be glorified and I spend that time, I think about you, I think about your desire, so bless you, bless you, amen.